Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a much anticipated topic. I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to make a room and linen spray. Now, if you liked my perfume making video where I shared with you a science experiment about why certain things work and other things don't work and why certain things work better than other things, you're really going to like this video as well. I'm going to be sharing with you another little science experiment showing you why I like certain products and certain formulas over other things and how I'm going to be making my own room spray. I'm also going to be sharing with you the full percentages, amounts, so that you can recreate this and I'll be listing the formula down below in the description box. I'm also going to be writing up the full recipe with amounts and percentages and a full step-by-step -step written tutorial and I'm going to be publishing that in my Patreon campaign this week. So if you're interested in that, please head on over there. I'm going to place the link to my campaign in the description box below. There's a ton to take advantage of over there. Along with this formula, there are three and a half years of archived recipes and formulas over there for you to take advantage of at the same $5 level. You can unlock all of it. And there are literally hundreds of recipes now. I post weekly, sometimes twice weekly over into the Patreon campaign. Again, I'll place the link in the description box. Hopefully you'll check it out coming up on the new year. There are so many other tiers and benefits to take advantage of over there too. We offer coupon codes to my favorite suppliers, monthly live hangouts, quarterly classes, gift packages, and so much more. Another way to access recipes is through my Etsy store. We just started bundling recipes together and listing them on the Etsy store. So these are going to be recipes that are bundled together by like and kind. These are the best ofs or some of my more popular formulas in bundles of two or three. So if you're someone that's just interested in sugar scrubs or body washes or the sea moss recipes, you can find those recipes bundled together in twos and threes on my Etsy store. So I hope you'll check it out. Again, I'll place the link below for you. There's about 10 different listings that you can take advantage of. All right, let's make some room and linen spray. All right, first things first, I just wanna start out by saying I know there are a ton of different ways to make room sprays and everybody has their preferred method. I'm gonna show you first a popular method of room sprays and why it just doesn't work for me. I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then we're just gonna talk about some of the pros and cons. So this way is using polysorbate 80 water and a bit of fragrance oil to make your room spray. So this does make an effective room spray and I'm gonna show you how that works. This is polysorbate 80 and polysorbate 80 is a solubilizer, but it also has some emulsifying properties. You can't use this as a complete emulsifier, but I'll show you what it looks like. So basically, if you're adding in waters and oils, you're gonna need some sort of solvent or solubilizer. Otherwise, your waters and oils are not gonna mix. So in this case, we're going to be using polysorbate 80 to solubilize our oil. So I'm just going to show you a tiny bit in this little beaker here and what happens. So I'm going to be adding to this beaker a half a gram of polysorbate 80. Now when you're doing this method, what you want to do is use equal parts polysorbate 80 to your fragrance oil. So I'm just going to use a half a gram here just to show you. Okay, now for this method, you need to next put in your fragrance oil and then stir them really well so that your polysorbate can start to, or that your oil can start to solubilize in the polysorbate 80. So we're just gonna add this up to one gram total, half a gram of polysorbate, half a gram of fragrance oil. I'm using Cashmere Plum by Candle Science. It's a really nice, clean fragrance. So then you're gonna mix the polysorbate 80 and fragrance oil together really, really well basically until you see no kind of like oil slicks on the top. You just want to see a clear liquid. Now the polysorbate 80 has a viscosity to it. It's also known for its viscosity boosting powers. So to me, this is one of the downfalls and I'll explain why in a minute. All right, so it takes quite a bit of mixing just to make sure that 
everything is well combined and that fragrance oil is solubilized. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add in some distilled water. So we're gonna be adding in 10 grams of distilled water. Okay, and then this takes quite a bit of mixing, but you're gonna mix your distilled water and the polysorbate 80 and fragrance oil combination until everything is very, very well combined. Now, as you can see, my mixture is turning cloudy and white. This is because the polysorbate 80 also acts as a bit of an emulsifier. So the oil and water is now solubilized and a little bit emulsified. And there you go. There's your room spray, in essence. This is a very popular way to make a room spray. It smells really good. You know, it doesn't really have any, the polysorbate 80 doesn't really have any scent to it as far as I'm concerned, maybe slightly, but it doesn't come through in the finished product. And you can totally use this. I wanna show you one that I made that's been sitting because it does turn even more white after a while. See the difference? This one is slightly more white on this side. So anyway, this is a combination that people use all the time to make room and linen sprays. As long as you're not using too much polysorbate 80 or too much fragrance oil, you could use this on your linens as well because it's body safe as long as you're using a body safe fragrance. So my main issue with this one, first of all, is it's, it's white. It's opaque looking. I really, really prefer a clear looking room spray if I'm gonna use a room spray. My second problem with this is because it's made with polysorbate 80 and water, it has bigger water droplets. When you spray it out, to me that's an issue. When you spray it into the air or onto your fabrics, it doesn't dry down quickly. It leaves your surfaces looking wet. It leaves your linens damp for a long time. Now, although this is an okay to make, uh, an okay to way make fragrance oil, to me it's just not preferable because of the color and because it doesn't dry down fast. I don't like it if it leaves a residue on my surfaces, my linens, or if it, if you spray it into the air and then it drops down to the carpet or the floor and leaves a residue on the carpet or floor. This is why I, mainly why I don't prefer this type of method. Now, I'm not going to demo how to make this type of recipe here, but this one is a totally clear recipe. I'm just going to talk about it with you for a minute. This is also using the cashmere plum fragrance oil, but it's a mixture of polysorbate 80, witch hazel, perfumer's alcohol. Now perfumer's alcohol is the type of alcohol that you use when you're making perfume. And then it also has some distilled water in it. So this one is a pretty good option as well. It does make a very clear base. Um, my problem with this one, even though if you let it sit for a week or two, the smell does get better when you smell it after you take it out and you smell it you still get that base note of witch hazel and to me it's just not pleasant mixed with the fragrance oil so you can make a, a completely clear base from scratch using again witch hazel perfumers alcohol polysorbate 80 and distilled water and a little bit of um, preservative but again, it's just not, it's not great because the smell of the witch hazel doesn't go all the way away. And also with this one, much like the other one, because it's made with water, it doesn't dry down quickly. So I'm actually going to give you a little bit of a demonstration on that about what I mean. So I've got a white piece of paper here. I'm just going to take it and spray this one here. Um, I'm gonna spray it down and I'm gonna show you what that looks like now of course it's completely wet but I'm gonna allow this to dry off to the side while we move along with the next phase of this video because I want to show you what I mean by it doesn't dry down and it kind of leaves a residue much like the first one I showed you 
which to me is an issue. Real quick before we move on to my preferred method of making body sprays, I just wanted to note that these are two very popular ways of making room sprays and I have tried so many more on top of this as well and they all kind of have similar issues. So you can use polysorbate 20 with rubbing alcohol, water and fragrance oil. You can add a little rubbing alcohol to this mixture here with the polysorbate 80 and water. Um, and then there's other ways you can do it with witch hazel. So I have tried over the years, I've tried so many different ways and this just never really was something that I felt comfortable using or selling. So I started investigating different ways to make room sprays and really kind of doing a deep dive. And I found like I did with my body sprays and my perfumes that I really, really just prefer using a base. And what's important with a base here is that you want to make sure it's an alcohol base, much like you would when you're making a body spray or perfume. If you've seen my other videos on that, you know that I do prefer the alcohol bases for this type of recipe. This one I got from Rustic Essentials. It's a fragrant room and body spray, so you can actually use it for body spray, room spray, and I'm actually using it as a linen spray too because if it's safe for your body, it can go on your sheets and things like that too as long as you're following usage rates for your fragrance um, oil that you're using, you wanna make sure if you're using it as a body spray or if it's gonna go on your linens, that you're using a body safe fragrance and you're abiding by the usage rates. So first things first with this base, you wanna make sure you're testing every fragrance oil that you wanna use. Although it's a really, really great base and it says this right on their website in the description of product, it doesn't work with every fragrance oil, even if you're abiding by the usage rates. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So this is what it looks like when it doesn't work. So I have tried this out now. Just trust me, if you're getting any type of base and it says on their website that it doesn't work with all fragrance oils, don't go making a big old batch of it because you're gonna regret it. If it doesn't work, you're gonna waste a bunch of fragrance oil and a bunch of product. So this is how you test a very small amount. I'm gonna show you what one looks like that doesn't work. So for this base, we're gonna use, I'm gonna use 10 grams of base. And then to this base, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a half a gram of fragrance oil and the fragrance oil that I'm going to use here doesn't work with this base so I'm going to just tell you which one that is in case you come across it that way you won't waste any product so I'm going to use a little bit of the sunflower and sandalwood fragrance oil this comes from brambleberry it's a fantastic light cheery clean fragrance I'm going to use just half a gram in here to show you so I might have to bring this up a little bit closer so you can see. Okay. And that is at about a 5% fragrance load. Now check this out. This is what it looks like when it doesn't work. I'm gonna mix and mix and mix. to get this all combined. And now normally when this works, you'll see the oil just kind of solubilizes in the base, much like a perfume or a body spray. When it doesn't work, you're gonna see beading up. Now I'm gonna try to give you a close up of this so you can see what I'm talking about. But you should see here that I have a cloudy formula and that my fragrance oil is not combining. It's acting much like it would act if you just stuck it in straight water. So you're gonna see beads of fragrance trying to kind of combine back and join back together. And as you can see, it's just not, it's just not combining, okay? So make sure you test small amounts. I just wanted to show you that because they don't all work. And if you go adding and making a big batch, you're going to be 
sorry that you did that. And also, I wanted to show you what it looks like when it doesn't work so that you're not confused. When it works, it looks different, and I'll show you that right now. So, even though this base doesn't work with every fragrance oil, it is still by far the best base that I've ever come across. All right, so we're gonna make a cashmere and plum room and linen spray. And I know that the cashmere plum works great in this base. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right into my spray bottle. We're gonna kind of measure as we go. And I'm gonna be adding my fragrance oil in at 5%, a 5% fragrance load. So I'm measuring it out now, and then I'll calculate my 5%. All right, I'm gonna stop there. I have a total of 472 grams of base in there. So we're gonna be adding in 23 grams of the cashmere plum, and that's at, again, about a 5% fragrance load, which is also safe for skin usage. I have another container here. Okay, so as you can see, we are getting, it already is starting to solubilize. It's not separating out like the other one that didn't work. And I'll give you a visual of that one again in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and just place my, my lid on there. And then I'm going to give this a good shake. I'm going to get everything mixed up. All right, and we're just gonna allow that to settle. But as you can see, it's a tiny bit cloudy, but it will clear up. It'll go completely clear. I'll show you, I've already made some um, a few weeks ago that with the same formula. So I'll show you what it looks like after it has had a chance to sit for a while too. But as you can see, it's solubilizing. So again, here's a, an example of a fragrance oil that doesn't work. See, you just have a bead, a big glob of a beaded up fragrance oil that doesn't want to combine with the base. And in this case, it does combine. So I wanted to show you the finished product after it's had a chance to sit for a while. So here is the same formula as this. You can see it clears up perfectly, solubilizes perfectly, there's no separation, and it smells fantastic at a 5% ratio. So I have been super happy with this base. Again, as with anything, you have to do your testing. Not everything works the same. Okay, so I wanted to give you, I wanted to come back to this paper here where I sprayed it down with the base made from scratch with the witch hazel and the polysorbate 80, the water and the perfumer's alcohol. This is what I mean about it not drying down. So I'm hoping that the camera is picking this up but it's, it's leaving a film on my paper. Like it's not wet, wet, but as you can see, it leaves kind of a weird film. So this is what it does to your fabrics. And this is what it does because it's a little bit more viscous than an alcohol base. This is what it does to your floors after it kind of falls out of the air and lands on the ground. And I just find it unappealing. So I'm gonna show you side by side now see here's the one with the one from scratch and then i'm going to spray and out the alcohol base one up here and i'm going to give it a few minutes to dry and then i'm going to show you a comparison so you can see why i like the alcohol base more okay i'll bring you right back to show you the comparison after everything's had a chance to dry all right, I'm back to go ahead and show you the difference between the two. So the top was sprayed with the room spray that we made with the alcohol base and the bottom was sprayed with the room spray that we made from scratch with the witch hazel, the denatured alcohol, the polysorbate 80. And I really am hoping my camera can pick this up, but this is the top one was sprayed just a few minutes ago and it's already dried down completely. You can't see it. You can only tell that the paper was a little bit wet at some point. Um, but then the bottom has this funny kind of oily looking slick to it. It almost leaves like 
a bit of a residue, like an oily looking residue, and you can actually feel it. Um, when you spray that on your sheets, on your curtains and towels, that's actually something that you can feel, at least I can. And so that's why I never have preferred those types of bases. The alcohol base dries down completely. And in fact, when you spray it in the air, it dissipates before it drops down to your carpet or gets on any of your surfaces. So to me, it's just an overall better choice. So everybody, that's how you make a beautiful room and linen spray, also safe for your body. I hope you really liked this video. I hope you appreciated the extra information on this one. It's just taken a really long time to find something that works that I felt comfortable sharing, and now we have it. So I hope you really liked it. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please remember to comment below. I really like to see your questions and comments. Share this video with a friend and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, everybody, bye. Catch you on the next video. Keep shining.